Hi guys, Adam here with Adam L Photography. We're out here on this windy ass day shooting some seascapes and I thought I'd take a moment just to tell you a little bit about what it is that I look for when I am shooting seascapes, a few tips and tricks and uh, some ways to stay safe and get that shot. Safety is paramount. The ocean is always changing. A lot of the times where we're trying to get our shot during like these really sort of uh, energetic storms and lots of waves crashing on rocks and that can lead to a pretty dangerous situation because the ocean uh, it's just so unpredictable. So one thing I like to do first is before I get myself into the situation is to uh, take 10-15 minutes to sit back uh, a little way from the scene where I want to shoot and just sort of watch the situation, watch what the waves are doing, see if there are any um, you know, rogue waves coming through, any big sets coming through and just make sure that that spot that I want to shoot at is a safe spot. Uh, that said as well, keep an eye on the tides. Sometimes the tides, like here in Okinawa, can just come rushing in so quick and uh, everything can change in a matter of minutes. So keep an eye on that. So when you're shooting a seascape, you don't always have to try to get uh, the most blurred out long exposure. You don't always have to shoot for 30 second or 40 second exposures. Uh, sometimes you can just shoot for, uh, you know, like a fifth of a second or a third of a second, a sixteenth of a second and capture the waves, uh, the shape of the wave as it impacts the rock. Still getting a little bit of motion blur but not necessarily blurring it out so it's all silky smooth. Sometimes you want to get that silky smooth thing. It all depends on what you're trying to get. Uh, but vary, play around a little bit with your shutter speeds and try different uh, approaches to capture the same scene. You might be really surprised with what you get. Another thing I really like to pay attention to, which a lot of people seem to miss, is the directionality of the clouds. So a lot of times, for example, if I'm shooting in this direction here, I'm going to want my clouds to be either moving in that direction or coming back towards the camera. When I do that, what happens is going when the clouds are coming from behind me, it's almost as if they're exploding out of the camera. Um, when they're coming towards me, it's, it's sort of drawing me in like this big attack force coming. But most importantly is I get a lot of shape and definition within the blur of the clouds. If you shoot with the clouds moving parallel or across your frame, a lot of times you end up with um, just a big hazy blur with no real definition to the sky and it can really, really make or break a shot. All right, composition wise, keep an eye on your horizons. You don't want to be shooting all the time with your horizon dead center. In fact, look at the rule of thirds and try to keep your horizon either in the top third or the bottom third. You will notice a massive difference on the impact that your shot gets. Okay, when you're shooting um, a long exposure as well, you want to watch out for light leaking getting into the back of the viewfinder of the camera. Now, if your camera has a little curtain that you can shut down to stop that light getting in there, great. If not, use a towel. Um, I use a little bit of uh, duct tape and to sort of duct tape that close. But whatever you're going to do is block the light getting into that viewfinder. Um, it can really, really cause like a purple hazing through the shot, totally ruin the shot and make it almost impossible to fix in post. All right, using ND filters. ND filters are amazing. They're like sunglasses for your lens. They allow you to to uh, control the amount of light that's coming in through the lens and use a longer exposure, a longer shutter speed, even during brighter light in the daylight and get that motion blur and get that big, um, soft, silky smooth look. Uh, ND filters, polarizing filters are a must. Look, it goes without saying, you need to have a sturdy tripod. A really good tripod is a must when you're shooting. Your, your camera cannot be allowed to shake and twist around while you're shooting these shots. You really, really have to keep everything tight and dry. So use a good tripod use a good lens, use good filters, and you will get great shots. Okay, this is gonna be the last point because the tide is coming in so quick now, but most importantly is just be prepared. Have everything that you could possibly need with you on the shoot so that you're not left looking for things later. You really wanna have all your stuff with you at all times when you're doing the shoot. Hi guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you did enjoy this video, please hit the like button. Helps get my video out there to more people. Also subscribe to uh, my channel for more uh, videos that'll be coming, more tutorials, more product reviews, just more and more and more of everything. And if you're on Instagram, check me out at Adam L Photo, F-O-T-O. And uh, give me a like there. You'll see a lot of my images there, which you might not be able to find in other places. Most importantly, happy shooting.